morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, breakfast at UM, UM Health Sessions. So I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker today, Dr. Leong Wai Ling, who will be presenting the latest updates uh, on lung cancer staging according to the ninth TNM edition. Dr. Leong graduated from RCSI in 2010 and subsequently completed her Master of Radiology from University Malaya in 2019. She then joined UM as a lecturer in 2021 with a special interest in chest and breast imaging. So without further delay, I will now hand it over to Dr. Leon to begin her talk. Thank you, Dr. Lim, for the kind introduction. So um, today, I would like to talk about the lung cancer staging and the updates in the 9 TNM, which started in 20, uh, 1st of January 2025. So the outline of my talk, I will talk about a little bit about the importance of staging, and then I'll go into the TNM staging. First, I'll start with the 8th edition, which was what we were previously used to, and then to the, the changes in the 9th edition. I'll talk about the media standard note mapping, and then we will I will go on to the revision of an international association for the study of lung cancer stages according to the 9 TNM combination. So lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide, and it has the highest mortality rates among both men and women. So previously, effective interventions were primarily restricted to surgical resection and mainly for early-stage tumours, and chemotherapy and radiotherapy were mainly for advanced cancers. So over the years, we see a progression of treatment options uh, leading to a multimodal approach throughout various stages of the disease. And so consequently, we see an increase in the emphasis on the anatomical extent of tumours in the advanced stages, especially in the higher N and M stages. So why is staging important? It is to determine the prognosis of the patient, uh, to look for potential surgical candidate for complete resection, and to decide on the mode of treatment that is either a curative surgery, chemotherapy, or radiotherapy, or a combination of everything. So TNM, which stands for tumour, nodal, and metastasis, is a fundamental tool for cancer staging and provides a universal nomenclature to describe the anatomical extent of disease. So um, this is the TNM 8 edition for the T classification and T classification uh, talks about the tumor size. So in the 8th edition, TX uh, stands for tumor in sputum or bronchial washing and this is not uh, visualized in imaging or bronchoscopy. T0 would be no evidence of tumor TIS will be carcinoma in situ. And T1 would be characterized by tumor of uh, less than 3 centimeters in its maximal dimension, surrounded by lung or visceral pleura, not involving the main bronchus. T2 would be a tumor of 3 centimeters up to 5 centimeters, or the involvement of the main bronchus without the carina, regardless of its distance from the carina. T3 would be a tumor of 5 to 7 centimeters in its greatest dimension, or tumor of any size that involves the chest wall, pericardium, phrenic nerve, or presence of satellite nodules in the same lobe. T4 would be a tumor of more than 7 centimeters in greatest dimension, or involvement of the invasion of the mediastinum, diaphragm, heart, great vessels, recurrent laryngeal nerve, carina, trachea, esophagus or presence of separate tumour in a different lobe of the same lung. So um, we can see that uh, this the TNM 9 edition is uh, effective starting from the 1st January 2025. And in the 9th edition, there is no change in the T classification. So what was in the 8th edition for the T classification remains unchanged in the 9th edition. So before I talk about the ninth, uh, the, the, the ninth, the end staging, I would like to explain the mediastinal node map where mediastinal nodes are divided into multiple stations based on the anatomical location. So on this picture on the left here, we see a diagram of the anatomical location of the mediastinal nodes, looking at the patient from the front, okay, and we can see that there are multiple groups of nodes. So the supraclavicular node, um, it is determined by the low cervical supraclavicular and sternal notch nodes, so supraclavicular nodes here. And we have the superior mediastinal nodes, which are station 2 to station 4. So station 2 over here, we have two right and two left, the upper paratracheal nodes, which are located above the aortic arch, 3A and 3P, which is prevascular and retrotracheal nodes, and I'll talk about them in the next slide. 
And we have the station four nodes, lower paratracheal nodes for R and for L, which are below the margin of aortic arch. And then we have the aortic nodes, uh, station five and station six, the subaortic nodes, la uh, nodes lateral to the ligamentum arteriosum. And we have the paraaortic nodes, which are nodes lying anterior and lateral to the ascending aorta and aortic arch. Seven, we have subcarinal nodes, station seven, which are below the subcarina, uh, below the carina. Then we have the inferior mediastinal nodes, station eight and nine, the paraesophageal and the pulmonary ligament nodes. And then we have the pulmonary nodes, which are station 10 and 14 on both sides. Okay, so the hyla nodes and the pulmonary nodes. And then in the, uh, this now we're looking at the uh, image of us, of, uh, of the diagram, uh, looking from the side. So here is the anterior and here is the posterior. So at the, so here is the, ant here's the anterior and here's the posterior. So the nodes in green are the prevascular nodes, which are anterior to the vessels. And 3P, which are retrotracheal nodes, are located behind the trachea. So the previous two slides, I understand, are quite heavy and are mainly anatomical based. But the key point to rem remember from these two slides is that the mediastinal nodes are divided into stations based on their anatomical position. And the involvement of these nodal stations will subsequently affect the staging. So the end classification in the eighth edition says that N1, okay, it's ipsilateral peribronchial or hyla nodes. N2, ipsilateral mediastinal and or subcarinal nodes. And N3, contralateral mediastinal or hyla nodes. So what does this all mean? So let's look at this diagram. And this patient has got a right lung tumor. So we can see that the N1, it means ipsilateral peribronchial hyla nodes will be denoted by the bubble in green. Okay, so this is N1 node for patients with a right lung tumor. And in the N2 tumor, they, have, they is considered by ipsilateral mediastinal and or subcarinal nodes, which are denoted by the area in orange. So we can see these nodes are divided. So there's quite important anatomical landmarks that we need to remember when looking at the patient. Uh, how we're going to define uh, N1, N2, or N3 nodes. So the important boundary to remember to differentiate presence of N1 and N2 nodes is this line, which is the lower border of the azygous vein over here. So anything uh, above the lower border of azygous vein, it will be differentiated by station 4 nodes versus station 10 node. So this would differentiate between N1 and N2 staging of the patient. So N3 nodes will be denoted by contralateral mediastinal or hyla, so contralateral, and uh, or presence of supraclavicular nodes. So we can see that the nodes are denoted by yellow, yellow color. So this is N3 node. So what is contralateral? So the boundary between right and left is not in the anatomical midline. And the important boundary to know is the left lateral border of the trachea over here. So anything that is to the left of the le left lateral border of trachea would be considered contralateral nodes in a right lung tumor patient. So these are the important landmarks to differentiate N1 versus N2 and N2 versus N3. So if you translate that to a CT scan, so we're looking at two images, a uh, CT thorax in axial view. So this dotted yellow line here is the left lateral border of the trachea and it denotes what's between right and left uh, middle side of nodes. And then in this, this structure over here, pointed by the yellow arrow, is the azygous vein. So the inferior border of the azygous vein is the border between uh, 4R and station 10 nodes, N1 versus N2 stage. So now we look at a diagram of a patient with left lung tumors. So again, the N1, N2, and N3 do not change in left lung tumors, just that there's a bit of an anatomical difference on how we denote N1 and N2 in a left lung tumor patient. So the boundary, for, uh, boundary between N1 and N2 in the left is denoted by the upper border of pulmonary artery. So this is the pulmonary artery, and this is the upper border of the pulmonary artery. So we can see that that um, the N1 nodes are in green bubble over here. So these are the ipsilateral peribronchial hyla node, and anything above the upper border of pulmonary artery would be considered the uh, station 4L nodes. So this is how we differentiate 4L and station 10 nodes. And again, the midline, uh, the, the what 
what denotes the uh, left and right, separates left and right, is again the left lateral border of the trachea. So anything to the right of the left lateral border of the trachea would be contralateral nodes in a patient with left lung tumors. So again, this is the pulmonary trunk and this is the uh, pulmonary artery. So this is the border between station 5 and station 10 nodes. Uh, so N1 versus N2 in a left lung tumor patient. So in the ninth edition, there's actually a little change uh, in the uh, end staging uh, for the TNM. Okay, so the N2 is further subdivided into N2A and N2B. Okay, so there is N and N2A shows there is metastasis to a single ipsilateral mediastinal or limb node station. That means only one station in uh, in the ipsilateral mediastinal uh, is involved. Versus N2B, there is metastasis to multiple ipsilateral mediastinal or limb node station. So now we move on to the M classification, which stands for distant metastasis. And in the eighth edition, it is divided into M1A, M1B, and M1C. So M1A shows tumor in contralateral lung, plural or pericardial nodule, or presence of malignant effusion. M1B, there's single extrathoracic metastasis. And M1C would be multiple extrathoracic metastasis in one or more organs. Now in the ninth edition, the M1C stage is further subdivided into M1C1 and M1C2. So M1C1, it shows multiple extrathoracic metastasis in a single organ system, and M1C2 would be multiple extrathoracic metastasis in a multiple organ system. So it is important to know that um, in a single organ system, but multiple metastasis, this means an uh, example of that would be uh, multiple liver metastasis, but in one organ. So patient does not have any other uh, distant metastasis other than the liver mets, and there are multiple liver metastasis. That's M1C1. And M1C2 would be multiple extrathoracic metastasis involving multiple organs. So that would be uh, liver metastasis and with brain metastasis or with bone metastasis. That would be an example of that. So now I move on to the revision of International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer, stages according to the 9 TNM combination. So the subsets of T, N, and M categories are grouped into certain stages because these patients share similar prognosis and this will also aid treatment planning. So on the left, we can see that this is the 8th edition category and on the 9th to the 9th edition category. So the N2 is divided into N2A and N2B. All right, that's the, that's the new uh, ninth edition. And we can see down here, M1C is divided into M1C1 and M1C2. So how does this change the group of staging of the patient in ninth edition? We can see from N2, so previously in T1 and 2, okay, it's stage 3A. And now in the uh, T1 and 2 is divided into N2A and N2B. And N2B remains as stage 3A, Well, N2A is classified as stage 2B. So we see in T1 and 1, it was previously stage 2B and now it is a down stage to stage 2A. Okay, and now for T2 and 2, it was previously staged as stage 3A. And now because of the subdivision, okay, we see there is an upstage of, of the stage N2B to 3B and the uh, T n 2 a remains in stage 3A. And uh, in the T3 and 2, okay, the stage, it was previously stage 3B. And now in the stage N2B, it remains as a stage 3B. But in N2A, it's down stage 2, stage 3A. Okay, for T4 and 2, there are no changes in stage 3B. It remains as stage 3B for both N2A and N2B. Okay, despite the subdivision of M1C into M1C1 and M1C2, both of these remain as stage 4B. So there is no change in the uh, uh, stage 4B for this category. So why for the, why these changes? So the N component, which is a nodal component, has historically been categorized based on anatomical location and does not in include quantification. All right. So exploratory analysis performed for the 7th and 8th edition suggested that burden of the nodal metastasis at the hyla and mediastinal levels are associated with prognosis. So these changes now involving the um, where we change between single station to multiple station, it addresses the shortcomings of the classification 
purely based on anatomical location and takes disease burden into consideration. And also, it is stated that among tumours involving multiple metastases, the decreasing survival rate was found in an increasing number of organ systems involved. So the take-home points for all this, so in the ninth edition, uh, TNM staging for lung cancer, there is no change in the T stage. There is a subdivision of N2 category for the nodal staging into N2A and N2B to allow better quantification of nodal disease. And there is a subdivision in, of the M1 category into M1C1 to M1C2. So multiple METs in single organ versus multiple organs. There, although there is no change in stage, but there is better refinement of prognosis. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Leong, for your insightful presentation. And we have received two questions from the audience. So the first question is, um, for thoracic nodes that not state in the mediastinal node map, uh, for example, intramammary or intercoastal nodes, which end stage should they be in? And the second question is, for subcarinal nodes, are there division into left and right subcarinal nodes? Okay, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't include this in my presentation. So the nodes not specified in the end classification, so things like auxiliary nodes or intercostal nodes, intermemory nodes, uh, they are considered to be non-regional nodes and they are therefore considered distant metastatic disease. So nodes that we did not mention in the middle standard node map, although they are in the thoracic region, they are considered to be distant metastatic disease. And for the second question for subcarina nodes, uh, subcarina nodes are nodes located below the trachea, uh, below, uh, below the carina. So um, they are in station seven. And from the end division, uh, involvement of subcarina nodes in the N2 category, regardless, is it in the right or left, there is uh, no left or right. So there is no division of left or right subcarina nodes. So presence of subcarina nodes, automatic present, presence of involvement of the subcarina nodes automatically denotes N2 stage for the patient. Okay, um, uh, thank you once again, Dr. Leon, for sharing your valuable insight on the updates on the lung cancer staging. So that concludes our first session today. And now um, I will uh, hand over the session to the next presenter. Okay, thank you. Thank you.